Hi everyone, Altar Wasm speaking. Um, someone reminded me that I just forgot to add the freezing uh, engine um, for my uh, AutoGrid MIDI device. So now I've corrected that, upgraded this to version 1.8, and uh, I think it's the proper time to do uh, a new walkthrough on the device. So let's get on to it. Okay, so if you're familiar with my automating devices, uh, autoplay, autogrid, uh, automodulate, then uh, you know that um, these tools are uh, um, random uh, step sequences uh, which can trigger um, different uh, notes, uh, note lengths with uh, different velocities and gates and all that kind of stuff. Um, so Autogrid MIDI is the uh, version in which you are able to control up to eight instrument tracks. So uh, using just one MIDI clip with a root note, uh, you are uh, able to generate automatic grid patterns on up to eight tracks making sure that only one track is playing uh, at any moment. So uh, here's the interface. Um, so it's pretty, uh, it's pretty rich as uh, there are many features there. Um, first you have uh, this here, you have the step sequencer, which is the classic step sequencer, which I've put to uh, my automatic devices. So you have uh, four different note lengths probabilities uh, with uh, an, a multiplier that allows you to slow down the whole the whole shit the whole thing so you basically sh select the weight of each of the lengths and for each step the sequencer is gonna choose randomly one of these notes here you have the channels probabilities so um, you have your eight channels so uh, depending on the weights uh, the notes which is generated here will be sent to one of the eight um, instruments uh, one, at, one at a time um, then you have the, the gate length you have the velocity uh, which are random values between two uh, a minimum and a maximum you have a global uh, stutter probability uh, triggering uh, of triggering a note and you have the note scale, uh, which allows you to send not only the root note, which is on your master clip, but uh, to uh, scale it, transpose it, uh, given, uh, given a specific scale uh, with, uh, change, with probabilities um, on each of the steps of the scale. So this one, one will be the root note um, and with up to five octaves up for each of the notes. Um, you can as well select uh, a, a given scale. I've put as many scales as I know, so classically. Um, so the routing uh, is a bit complex. Uh, so I've provided the device with a full template that you can just load or import in any of your project, but um, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty simple if you just uh, look at it. So we have the device here on the master track. We have the master clip with just one note here. Then um, you have uh, a MIDI effect rack, which uh, will actually receive the notes that are sent here because we're not relying on MIDI here as uh, live is not able to, to control uh, different channels of MIDI. So I'm using instead the internal routing uh, of Max. So each of these receivers that you see here is listening to one of the channels. So MIDI A, O, W, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And uh, then I have my instrument tracks, which are in the same group. And so each of these instrument tracks are listening to the autogrid master track, but not to just speaking the, the what's going out of this, but specifically to the post mixer, uh, the post mixer channel of each of the sub effect tracks. So this one is listening to channel one post mixer, this one to channel two post mixer, etc., up to eight. So uh, what I'm making sure here is that um, this, this MIDI receiver will receive the notes corresponding to channel 3 and this instrument 3 will get what's going out of this MIDI receiver. So we have actually splitted uh, what's happening. Um, but let's see, so I'm on these tracks, um, they are only set to ARM. They can be as well in monitor in if you want to just listen to what's going on. But if you want to record, then you have to arm them. Um, 
and I just press play. So I have eight instruments which have been configured. So any any kind of so uh, again it's instruments. It's not uh, audio things. So uh, I'm gonna send MIDI MIDI information to these to these tracks. And let's just play and uh, hear what it does. So as you see, the um, device is following the priorities. So I have a bit of uh, 132nd and mostly uh, regular uh, 116, 18 and 1 fourth. And the channels 5, 6, 7, 8 happen less often than uh, channel 1, 2, 3, 4, which have a higher, weight, higher weight. Um, now this is the, the whole thing that I've added on this version is the pattern, the random loop uh, pattern sequencer. Um, by default, uh, all this is happening at random, so you have you pretty much have no control on what's outputted. Uh, you have to record it, and uh, and which is uh, which is easy. But uh, you have then to cherry pick what you what the actual the, the device is generating. But um, with the looping engine, you can say, okay, I want a, sp a specific pattern which is one bar, and I want that that pattern to repeat again and again. And uh, each time I press new, then I'm gonna generate a new pattern. So and then I can just freeze that and record that pattern as a MIDI file uh, for further tweaking if need be. So let's see. Um, I'm gonna loop one bar and hear what it does. Let's generate another one. Said that I like this pattern, so I'm gonna record it. Um, I'm gonna to switch to to arrangement mode. So my tracks are in uh, are in record mode, and I just press record, and that's it. And now I have my pattern. If I just loop, if I just zoom it, you see that each of my tracks have the same pattern happening again and again. So I don't need to do all these repetitions. So I'm gonna select one, one bar of each. Yeah, it's gonna be faster this way. <laughs> Now I can 
deactivate my device. And I have my full grid. Uh, as you can see, uh, there are only one note playing at a time. If I open, let's open this one, you see that I'm sometimes not exactly on point as uh, there is some latency in the uh, MIDI, send, uh, MIDI send device, which I've not been able to remove, but uh, this is easy to correct. Let me just select all my notes and just quantize them, and now I'm perfectly in sync. Uh, it's not a big deal, it's not a big deal, but if you're as me, <laughs> as I am a bit of control freak, then it's better to, to do that and to, uh, to, to sing and as you see this one has no notes because in that sequence uh, no notes have been playing on this two instruments which is not a problem but it's uh, something you may want to to correct if you want uh, absolutely that to happen so what you let's remove that what you usually will want to do is maybe have one bar of, of one bar and just uh, save that and then create another sequence of one bar and then let, do like up to eight bars so you have a full eight bars loops uh, sequence and you have chosen what's happening on each of the bars and then uh, you just collate uh, all these sequences and and you get and you get the and you get the full eight bar pattern uh, which is uh, which is what you want for your track. So especially if you, I mean, you know, I know that's, that it takes a lot of time to just uh, build grids. Uh, you first need to so to choose the sounds, um, which is first step. Then you need to cherry pick to, to, do, to do the notes, the actual notes. So I hope that Autograd uh, MIDI is a, a tool that can help you uh, fast, uh, get get quick on this uh, on this workflow. And uh, hey, that's it for today. Uh, hope it was uh, simple enough. And uh, thank you for your attention. Cheers.